Hi everyone, Digital Foundry's John Linneman here, and today we're going to take a closer look at the new Xbox One streaming capability now available in Windows 10. This option is included in the new Xbox app prominently featured in Windows 10, which allows you to browse your catalog of games, view messages, check out achievements, and more. With this app, Microsoft is trying to bring the PC and Xbox platforms closer together by delivering an all-in-one experience. The most important new feature, however, has to be the Xbox One streaming. As with Valve Software's own in-home streaming features, Xbox One streaming works by connecting your PC and Xbox One to the same local network, where Windows 10 can stream the console directly to your PC. You can play it with an Xbox One or Xbox 360 gamepad attached to your PC, or leave it connected to the console. The resulting video on the PC is then mirrored out over the Xbox One's HDMI output, and the system behaves as if you were using it locally. Unfortunately, the results are often far from ideal. While input latency is kept to a minimum, coming in around 50 milliseconds under optimal conditions, actual video performance is wildly unstable. Let's take a look at Forza 5 here. Right now we're seeing a smooth, stable 60 frames per second. It looks great and it feels responsive. There are minor blips here and there as you see, but in general it looks pretty good. Well, unfortunately, that feeling doesn't last long. All too quickly we see the frame rate go from completely fluid to around 30 to 40 frames per second on average. This is actually consistent with our general experience across the board in fact. It isn't terrible, it's not unplayable by any means, but it just doesn't feel correct. Take Ori in the Blind Forest for instance, a fast paced 60 frames per second platformer. The footage we managed to capture never actually runs particularly well does it? Yet earlier in the day we actually had a great experience with this perfectly stable 60 frames per second for a good 10 minutes or so. We did at least manage to get in a round of iDARB running at its full 60 frames per second. The simple visuals are actually a great match for the streaming, though any additional input latency, however small it may be, does kind of put you at a disadvantage. What about titles running at 30 frames per second, such as Dying Light here? At this level of performance, we see something more in line with what you'd expect on real hardware. Unfortunately, the streaming process introduces noticeable frame pacing issues that kind of detract from what would otherwise be a fairly consistent experience. You can actually see these inconsistencies if you look over at the frame time graph on the left. The same problem is exhibited here with Crimson Dragon, which just isn't as fluid as it should be, though of course the game itself is still quite nice looking. Now let's talk about image quality. The app includes three levels of quality, high, medium, and low. High requires roughly 14 megabits per second of bandwidth, while medium needs around six, and low comes in just under four. In comparison, Valve's in-home streaming available in Steam can take advantage of a full 30 megabits. When using Xbox One streaming, color precision is reduced and overall screen resolution is impacted, leading to a blurrier overall presentation, as you can see here in this side-by-side -side comparison. Also note the compression artifacts such as macro blocking, which are visible throughout the scene, but particularly in the sky. For a 30 frames per second racing game like this, image quality isn't half bad. Motion blur and forward motion actually manage to keep things looking pretty good. When you jump to something like Killer Instinct, however, the limitations quickly become evident. Notice how much detail and color is lost on the stream side. The fuzzier image quality, combined with inconsistent performance levels, leaves a lot to be desired, especially for a fast-paced fighting game like this. 
we can also take a look at how the various quality settings stack up. There isn't a tremendous visible difference between high and medium, but the low side, it's pretty hideous, we have to say. When placed side by side, the differences are abundantly clear. Of course, games with less high frequency detail definitely fare much better. Take Volgar the Viking, for instance. The clean 2D pixel art manages to remain relatively sharp during gameplay. How about Halo 1 included in the Master Chief Collection? Here the compression artifacts really stand out, and the unstable performance leads to a subpar gameplay experience. This really isn't the best way to play Halo. When dropping to medium, things actually continue to look about the same. A few more artifacts are visible, sure, but it's very similar to high. Unfortunately, in both cases, the frame rate remains somewhat unstable. Dropping all the way to low results in an incredibly poor presentation. The frame rate is cut in half, macro blocking fills the view, and the resolution is dropped even further. It's really difficult to imagine anyone finding this setting playable. So that about wraps up our thoughts on the feature at the moment. You have fast controls, mediocre image quality, and poor performance that ultimately disappoint, but without a larger sample size, it's difficult to pass judgment on a feature such as this. We did test the game streaming on two separate networks, but the results were actually quite similar in the end. So while our experience wasn't great, that doesn't mean others won't fare better. Seeing that the feature is included with Windows 10, it certainly doesn't hurt to try it yourself. Just don't expect any miracles. Anyways, that's about it for the moment. Thanks for listening. And be sure to check out the full article for more details.